Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to my first PowerPoint tutorial. In this video I'm going to share with you five different ways to make an illustration for your PowerPoint presentation. Method number one. Make a simple drawing in paint or in another convenient drawing tool. There's actually a large number of different drawing programs available, some pixel-based and some vector-based. Generally speaking, the better the program you want, the more you have to pay for it. The primary advantage of MS Paint is that it's kind of free, provided you're running a Windows computer. If you have one of the latest Windows versions, MS Paint certainly came with it when you purchased it. Another advantage is its simplicity of use, provided you have a basic knowledge of the tools that are embedded in the program. In Windows, MS Paint is usually accessed through the Start menu, as we just saw. But if you're running Windows in coherence mode on a Mac, using Parallels Desktop, as I do, you'll find MS Paint either via the Parallels menu in the menu bar, or you may have an icon to start it from in the dock. MS Paint possesses tools for drawing circles, lines and curves as demonstrated and also tools for adding various colors to your drawing. In a separate video called How to make a simple drawing in MS Paint I go through all these basic tools of the program, demonstrating them one by one. Now, method number two for making an illustration for your PowerPoint presentation. Make an advanced drawing or a detailed drawing using the same sort of tool. MS Paint also has a number of tools in addition to what I consider being the basic ones. Among these are a spry box, a number of brushes, and even a pencil and a pen. Here I'm demonstrating the spry box, which has a rather cool effect. And here you see one of the brushes being used to paint branches on a number of bushes. All these things are demonstrated in much more detail in another video of mine called How to make an advanced drawing in MS Paint. Another important option that you have in MS Paint is the possibility to select grid lines to be shown and then zoom in on the picture in such an extent that you may draw and control each single pixel of the image one by one. This particular technique, among other stuff, is thoroughly demonstrated in another earlier video of mine called How to make a detailed drawing in MS Paint. Next, we'll come to method number three for making PowerPoint illustrations. Use a photo as a template for a drawing in Paint. To be honest, this is actually a way of cheating. Now, this is a photo of my daughter's trumpet, and I want to use it as a template for a drawing. First, cut the entire image out and add a non-white color to the background, before you paste the photo back in. Make sure transparent selection is chosen. The color just added will then shine through the image. Every white pixel of the photo has now been removed, they have all been replaced by the red color just added. Now remember there are millions of different color shades, 
So everything that still seems to be white are just shades of grey and close to white colors. The real white is all gone. Next, use the various drawing tools of MS Paint to draw an outline on top of the picture in a color that isn't present elsewhere on the photo. The outline that has been drawn is now changed into white. Remember, sporadic white pixels were all removed before we embarked upon drawing, so the only white currently present in our drawing is the trumpet. Now go to the Image Properties window and select black and white for color attributes. You'll get a warning that you may lose colors and that the action cannot be undone. Just ignore the warning, and that brings the magic about. Every non-white pixel is changed into black by this attribute selection, thereby effectively removing the photo. If you want the image to be a black outline on white background, then finally right-click upon the image and select Invert Colors at the bottom of the menu that pops up. This technique is actually described step by step in much more detail in a separate video called How to use a photo as a template for a drawing in MS Paint. Now, the skeptic will say, so what can you do with such a drawing of a trumpet that you cannot do with the original photo? Well, imagine for one minute that I am a teacher in music intending to explain to my students the functions of a chromatic brass instrument. By importing this photo into my presentation, I may show them the mouthpiece and also the bell of the trumpet. And of course, I may even point out the piston valve house and teach my students the numbering of the piston valves. And then I may perhaps bring up a separate picture of the valves so as to be able to explain their function a little further. Nevertheless, that's pretty much what I can do with these pictures, whereas with the drawing I may demonstrate how air is blown through the trumpet, thereby creating the sound that is heard. And then I may even demonstrate, through animation, how air is forced to travel a little longer when you push down the second piston valve, thereby lowering any tone of the natural series of the trumpet by half a step. I may then show how the pipeline of the trumpet is made even longer when the first piston valve is pushed down instead of the second, lowering the tones of the natural series with one whole step, and how it is elongated even further when pushing the third valve so as to lower the tones with one and a half step. Now, method number four for making PowerPoint illustrations. Make a simple drawing on paper, then scan it and import it into your presentation. I'm here making a drawing of the Arch of the Aorta, intending to illustrate a congenital disease called a coarctation of the Aorta. The image is now scanned using whatever scanning device you may have, I usually select the text scanning mode for such illustrations. I'll shortly explain why. The drawing is now imported in PowerPoint for use in your presentation. Some will say, this drawing is too simple and stupid, you cannot use that one. 
Well, quite often, a simple drawing is just what you need to make your point during your presentation. Nevertheless, it may sometimes look a bit better if a frame in a nice color is added around it. And then, depending on your audience, anatomic descriptions may be appropriate or even useful. And finally, a broad arrow pinpointing the very issue that you are going to address will certainly do the trick. Now to the fifth and last method for making an illustration to be used in your presentation. Make an advanced hand drawing on paper, then scan it, improve it in paint, and finally add colors. Since I am now making a far more challenging paper drawing than the previous one, I start out with a sketch by either pen or pencil on one sheet of paper, as this allows me to correct any errors instantly. I then put another sheet of paper on top of the first one. The underlying sketch will shine through the upper sheet of paper, allowing me to follow it with a broad black marker as I make the final drawing. Take care also throughout the process of drawing that any field to which you want to add some color is without any openings in its outline or else color will spill out onto a larger part of the drawing. Next the image is scanned. After scanning the image is imported in paint to add colors to it. And keep in mind, this is also the time at which you have opportunity to make improvements in your drawing and also to correct any errors present. Now this process of adding colors is also the reason you need to select the text mode for your scanning and not the black and white option. Because if you make an ordinary black and white scan, there will be shades of grey along the black lines, preventing the added colors from coming all the way out to their borders. In contrast, a so-called text scan contains only black and white pixels, and so there is no grey or off-white, preventing added colors from filling their spaces appropriately. And so we finally end up with a nice drawing that can be used in a presentation on the anatomy of the human heart. Ladies and gentlemen, in my next video I'm going to demonstrate how movement may be added to some of these drawings. While waiting for that video, please have a look at my previously uploaded videos.